Um, I don't know if I'm back yet. The thing is doing the little I'm loading thing, but I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Seriously, somebody say something to me because I have no metrics on this screen to tell me um, if anybody's watching or, you know, I have nothing. I have my, I can see myself <laughs> on my screen and I have a red button that says end video. And okay, Stellar gave me a little heart. Thank you. So uh, I'm on. I'm on. I'm back. All right. Thank you, Sharon. Um, all right. I was talking to a guy earlier who said he liked to draw, used to draw, would be drawing now, but he's got arthritis in his hand and he can't grip a pencil, and or at least not for a long time. Now, obviously, I don't know what that's like. I don't have that problem, and you know, God forbid. I, I hope I never do. But I was asking myself, what would I do? You know, um, I can sometimes I'm all talk and I I say, well, I would find a way. You know, I'd find a way somehow. Um, but how? How would I do that? And so I I want to uh, I want to try it. Okay. So um, I don't know the extent of his problem, but I looked around my room for resources. So I've got my charcoal pencils. These are woodless charcoal pencils. Here I'm going to turn that around so you can actually see the brand if you wish to see the brand. Um, and uh okay so there's no wood it's just solid charcoal with a, a coating on the outside um that's what i like to use anyway i've got a paintbrush a long handled paintbrush and i've got a koozie for my soda pop okay don't be afraid i've got another one all right so i'm going to feed the paintbrush through the koozie. I'm going to take the last couple inches of the uh, pencil and I'm going to tape it onto the paintbrush. It will all be explained in a moment, um, which is not the same thing as saying it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work, but you'll see what I'm attempting at least. All right, so I've got my paintbrush and and thing. Now the koozie is too floppy uh, to grip, so I'm going to stuff the koozie with some old rags. Okay, so I'm going to stuff some rags in there. Got another one. I stuff that in there. Okay, so that makes a tight fit, a uh, fairly firm thing to hold on to. Um, and I don't know uh, about the guy's situation or anybody. I'm, arthritis is different from many people, but um, a lot of people who cannot do this could do this. So that's the assumption I'm going with. And the question is, can I draw like this? And we're about to find out because I don't know. So, um, so I'm going to draw something, and it's not going to be good. I, I just about guarantee you, it's not going to be good. So, <clears throat> be prepared not to be impressed with my drawing skills at the moment. That's that's for another time. Use your teeth or your toes. Got to get me some of those woodless charcoal pencils. Um, yeah, teeth and toes. Oh, man. I've never tried I can't say I've ever tried it. So maybe someday I've got to try that. Maybe someday I'll humiliate myself and try that on video. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. So here I am just trying this. Basically drawing with my fist. Um, it's 
So, so far, kind of so good. I mean, a lot of my drawings start off pretty scribbly like this. So it's not drastically different than a lot of my stuff. I have a suspicion <laughs> when we get to trying to do details, um, that's where I'm going to lose it. But my thought was, if I couldn't, hi, hi, Sissy again. Uh, if I wasn't able to do details, um, if I was physically incapable of that, um, then I, you know, I would draw in impressionism. You know, I, like I say, I would just, uh, I don't know, paint with my teeth, or like, like Sharon says, or just paint with my hands, buy finger paints and paint with my hand. I don't know what I would do. Uh, I, I want to think that I really would do something and not just fall into despair. I know that I would fall into despair at least briefly because um, I am inclined to do that. But would I, hopefully I would not stay there. Um, hopefully I, you know, I don't. When something bad happens to me, I don't bounce back with with cheerfulness and uplifting, you know, songs and joy and praising and all that. Um, I just drop into despair and go for a while and go, well, I'm still alive. Um, now what am I going to do? And, you know, sooner or later, uh, just wallowing in despair gets kind of boring and, you know, I want to do something. So that's what I do. Not really a, a great example of positive thinking or anything. But I like to think that I would do something. Now I can tell you I could do the same things that I always do with my smudging. And I could probably, could I erase? I don't know how much this would bother you. Whether you could grip this or not. Maybe there'd be a way to fix the eraser to the other end of the pencil. I wonder if anybody's thought of that. Fix an eraser to the other end of a pencil. A crazy idea. Um, but yeah, when it comes to line work and details maybe you could get used to it i don't know Tell you what, that's hard. It's not easy. Um, but, but there are people out there that are drawing with their teeth, and that's got to be harder. And some of them are doing just surprising, surprising things. So um, anyway, Sharon here says, I'll send you a photo of a magnetic koozie setup. It might work for him. A magnetic koozie setup. Interesting. Um, and Sissy says, I don't think I want to find out what would happen to my mental health if I could no longer do photography. I know what you mean. If you were suddenly like not able to do your thing, um, that would be horrible. Um, but so the question is, I guess, you know, how would you do your thing if you lost your hands or uh, how would you do your thing if you uh, something? I don't know. I met a guy at a party, and he, it's one of these times I really feel bad about this, how the story went, because he wanted something from me, and I couldn't quite understand what it was he wanted. I, he wanted, like, 
permission to use some designs of mine or whatever, which I was going to give him. Um, later, I couldn't figure out who this person was. Um, I, I couldn't track him down and uh, do anything. But he uh, had developed... He was young, so it had happened fairly early to him, but he had developed something that just basically withered both of his arms. So they just hung to his side uh, uselessly. And um, and he was an artist. So um, he was doing computer stuff. He was doing Photoshop. And he was doing it all with a... Uh, it was basically a mouse, but it was a big round ball that was set into a thing that set on the floor. And he could move it around with his foot. So it was like a... It's sort of like a very large mouse with a right click and left click on big, big buttons, and uh, and he could do all that with his foot. And he was doing some pretty incredible things. And I wanted to work with him, and I, like I say, I lost my contacts. You know, it's just like after that party, I didn't know how to go about finding this person, who he was. But uh, I am kind of clutching this. It, it is actually kind of making my hand tired, and that might be that might be a problem. Still, my other thought was to just stick my hand in the inside the koozie and kind of pad this somehow. Okay, so it's just like that. And uh, so I'm like Captain Hook with a pencil instead of a hook. And uh, so I'm going to do that. Let's see. See what else. I'll tell you one thing without hesitation. This is a pain in the ass. I really, really feel for anybody who finds themselves in these circumstances. And I hope I never find myself in these circumstances. For one thing, I really like to use the edge of the the point. And I can't seem to get onto the edge uh, this way. I seem to just be on the tip, you know. So I can't make those lines. I'm very fond of making those lines. It's like I can't get that low enough. Maybe if I extended this way out. Yeah, kind of. And you're tempted to kind of exert some pressure, which would bust this pretty easily. Um, so yeah, there are obstacles to doing this. This would be very hard. Um, of course, problems don't come singly. You got this problem. You've also got an abominable snowman standing on top of the hill, ready to come after you and do something abominable. Because they kind of specialize in that. Of the two, this works better for me because um, I'm really not gripping it at all. I'm just, I'm just moving. So if my assumption is um, 
that I've lost my grip strength and I can't, you know, do this anymore. Um, then this, this is probably what I would try or, or something to, of this equivalent uh, would be what I would try. The uh, koozie would make your hand very, very sweaty. You'd smell like a foot after a while. Um, but yeah, that would be something. That'd be something I would eventually try. And I think if I did it enough, I might actually be capable of being good at it. I would really, really like to never find out. But who knows? Uh, my favorite artist in the world is Frank Frazetta. I'm sure I've never mentioned that. Um, he had a stroke in his 70s. Um, eventually had a bunch more and eventually died from one. But um, he had a stroke in his 70s and lost the use of his right hand. And he was right-handed. So um, several years went by before you saw any artwork from Frank Frazetta because he was teaching himself to draw and paint with his left hand. And he eventually got to a point when, I mean, you would you would look at his paintings and go, oh, that's definitely a Frank Frazetta painting and not realize that, you know, he did that left handed. So it was completely different for him. So. Uh, I have occasionally tried to draw left-handed. Uh, this is better <laughs> than what I wound up with drawing left-handed. For one thing, the left hand is the hand of the devil. We all know it. Yeah, details. <laughs> Details are going to be hard if this ever happens to me. Those sharp little details are going to be very, very hard. Um, and Yeti, she forgot her camera. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, if I were a religious man, I'd be praying this never happened to me. Um, otherwise, I'm simply hoping this will never happen to me. Uh, it, arthritis has, uh, I have a history in my family, so it's not an impossibility. Um, however, I do think I might be able to get along. I would rather, should this happen, um, I think I'd rather just switch to something like pastels and kind of forget about the the small details. Just do pastels. I I don't know. I've got a set here that's in grays, fifty shades of gray. Um, you probably couldn't do this either. Uh, but I would be hoping for some way to, you know, some contraption to grip one of these and uh, be able to just do big movements. I think I'd get more gratification out of that. Or maybe not. Maybe I would just do a little bit and then go, well, dang it, I've got to gotta get in there and do my details now. I don't know. So there's that, there's that. That would be very annoying. Um, the other thing that came up today was this guy named Scott, who I think is probably watching. I don't know. He hasn't mentioned, he hasn't piped up yet. Uh, this guy named Scott says he had dreams of writing a fantasy novel back before life crushed his dreams and hopes and and um 
golly, um, that sucks. I hope that, uh, that you see your way clear to write that novel anyhow, even if it's really bad, um, you know, even if it's fanfic, um, you know, there's places to put it online and there is a great deal of satisfaction. I am told I haven't written any fanfic. I haven't written anything. Uh, that's not my calling. Um, but I've known a lot of people who've said, uh, just writing some fanfic, you know, and, and sticking it on a website and getting some feedback was just a hell of a lot more gratifying than not doing it. And so, uh, I do hope you, that you will, uh, one of these times, uh, get that, get that book out and you never know, it might turn into something really cool and somebody will pick it up. So that's, that's enough of that. What we're left with in the last 10 minutes is Gil drawing without a model because I'm not set up for it because I expected to take 30 minutes proving that I don't know how to draw with a koozie. Um, it turns out I could prove that a lot faster <laughs> uh, than 30 minutes. So there we are. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to get out some stuff and do some things. So drawing without a model. Um, what, what do I do? What, what? All right. I think the safest thing to do is a butt. When in doubt, draw a butt. And big hair. Bare butts and big hair. You know, if there was more of both, we wouldn't have a war. I'm just saying. Or poverty. Probably not even rap music. So, bare butts and big hair. We were watching a TV show. And, uh, I mean, it's a relatively recent TV show from England. We've been watching Acorn, Acorn TV, uh, which is like Netflix, only it's all British. Uh, anyway, uh, we were watching this TV show, and I don't know, it was filmed in 2012 or something, um, but the setting was late 60s in England, and uh, there was an episode uh, that involved the skinhead movement and ska music. And things like that. And I was like, in the 60s? And uh, so I went and looked that up. And sure enough, uh, all of that um, was from that area in, in the 60s. And so uh, the skinhead movement happened kind of, kind of, dwindled and then resurged in the 80s as an entirely different thing, particularly because the original skinhead movement was playing ska, which is a precursor to reggae. So it was, uh, they were finding some kind of something to uh, uh, understand in uh, Jamaican immigrants. Um, so, um, and by the 80s, when you said skinhead, um, there was no understanding uh, between skinheads and Jamaican immigrants. Um, so it was interesting. Um, but the history, the, 
the movement is actually a dozen different movements and it's a bunch of different people with different points of view and there's there's uh you know there's a white supremacist angle that's what everybody thinks of right now when you say skinhead and and then there's um but then there's a people who identify as skinhead and, and say no the whole idea is an anti-racist movement so um you know it's it's all over the place it was kind of interesting to say wow you can't just you can't just generalize anything um, until you know It was supposed to be an apolitical middle class, uh, you know, disenfranchised youth born into poverty, you know, time when there's no jobs and, you know. So how you solve that problem with soccer hooliganism, I don't know, but there you are. Uh, that's, that's what they do. What I can't remember is why the hell I thought of that and started talking about it. It felt like it was relevant when I started talking, but now I don't know. Out of that because of some TV show you watch on British version of Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Uh, George Gently, G G Inspector George Gently. Pretty good show. Um, I think we're about done. I think we may be on the last last episode tonight. Um, we developed a bad habit early in early in the uh, quarantine. 
where we'd binge watch and we'd just sit and watch like, you know, six episodes of something, you know, in, starting sometime in the afternoon, stay up late and, and stuff like that. And so uh, we limit ourselves to one episode a night. <laughs> and uh, and those ones, actually, you couldn't do six. They were long, long episodes. But um, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, a lot of, a lot of things that are, uh, yeah, I didn't know was an issue, you know, in England, uh, you know, in the sixties and, and, uh, turns out it was, I mean, I knew they had their, their hippie movement and the women's movement and some race issues and, and, uh, I mean, some, they had a lot, uh, but, uh, You know, it didn't play out the way ours did. Obviously, it was you know, different cultural pressures um, making things happen. So uh, it was different. It was interesting. I must have started talking about it because I said bare butts and big hair would save the world. Um, which of course it will. Uh, Rewatching Scarecrow and Mrs. King. That's that's a that's one title, Scarecrow and Mrs. King. I've never heard of it. Never. I think you're making it up. Um, yeah. I'll, I don't. I'll look for it. Um, on we're. Like I say, I think we're at the end, so we're gonna, we're looking for something new uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna look for something something good. Uh, we tend to we tend to like you know good wholesome good wholesome murder shows, yeah, murder shows. But I I don't like don't like those vindictive mean American murder shows. I, I like the good wholesome murder shows, I like the British ones. Um, so, uh, you know, we just not real keen on CSI and uh, criminal minds and things like that that make you, you know, just want to go check yourself into a mental hospital after you're done watching an episode. Um, but, uh, but I do, uh, you know, I do enjoy, I, I, I did enjoy uh, uh, Father Brown, uh, uh, Midsummer Murders. That was a, that was a wonderful show. Um, it was, uh, no, I've never heard, I've never heard of Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Sorry. Um, Bruce Boxleiter and Kate Jackson, 80s spy show. Freaking adorable. Okay. All right. I, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. And you say I'm not the only one binge watching my way through the pandemic. Uh, you know, we've obviously you go through phases of things, you know, as you, you know, the seven or the five phases of accepting death or, or whatever, you know, and there's, um, there's there's phases in the uh, in the pandemic, and one was to do all kinds of crazy behaviors that you wouldn't find acceptable from yourself the rest of your life, like eating too much and sitting around too much and being too mopey and you know staying up all night and throwing off your sleep schedule and and all that kind of stuff. And uh, eventually, you reach a point where you're going, I can't live like that, you know. And and not only might things go back to normal, but they might not ever. I maintain this might be what uh, what life is from now on. Um, and uh, you, you have to organize that and 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 get some kind of a grip on it. Um, I, I'm not happy with the thought, but it it is something we're having to to grapple with and, and, and just say, you know, how can I make this environment uh, the one that I really want to spend the rest of my existence in? Because it most likely is. Um, 
where I'm going to spend the rest of my life. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. So you've, you've got to make it as positive as you can because <laughs> there's a, the, the negative stuff's already taken care of for you. Um, it's already there. Oh my God. There's even links popped up in my, in my comments. I'll be darn. Okay. Uh, and you said it's an 80s sink that looks 80s. I, I don't even, uh, yeah. See big hair. If they've got bare butts, I'm, I'm all over this. Um, Sharon says it's the seven stages of grief. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. There's a, uh, there's uh denial, anger, Fear, um, well, it ends up with, with acceptance, but if, unless I failed in my math, that's only four and not seven. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, that's all I got. That is all I got. Now I'm going to go watch the entirety of scarecrow and bruce boxleiter from tron um bargaining bargaining yeah yeah are you sure is there any way out of that can i can i trade bargaining for something else because i don't really like bargaining I'll take twice as much fear for no bargaining um there is a i i, I saw a clip of uh of uh, the Simpsons, uh, Homer was dying. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how it ended, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he died in that episode or what. But uh, the the doctor was going through the the seven uh, stages, and Homer was responding with, <laughs> you know, appropriately. So he went through all seven stages, like before their conversation was even finished and the doctor was like oh, <laughs> you're doing this rather rather co surprisingly quickly um <clears throat> don't remember them all but i remember scarecrow and mrs king okay okay where was i you know what uh i know where i was i was working in a factory and i saw like zero television in the 1980s like zero um i had i owned a tv set for part of that time but <laughs> I uh, would have to go to the video store and rent a VCR and some tapes in order to watch anything on my TV set because there were no channels. Um, where I lived, there was nothing, <laughs> just static. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's where I was. So, Mark, nice to see that you were here, at least for um, at least for the death part of the thing. And um it's Wednesday. I'll be back at three o'clock tomorrow. So have a good night, you guys. Thank you.